Welcome to this special edition of Political Jungle, Race to the Bench. This spring, it appears that approximately 40 esteemed members of the bar will vie for approximately nine vacant seats on the Court of Common Pleas of Allegheny County. Because COVID-19 has made traditional campaigning obsolete, the customary methods, shaking hands, meeting people face-to-face -face, have been cast aside. So as a service to our loyal viewers of Political Jungle and to voters throughout the Commonwealth, PCTV will bring as many candidates as possible into the political jungle. We hope that this more intimate conversation uh, will help those filling out their ballots and those uh, who are vying to be called your honor uh, will be in a better position to be judged on their character and suitability for the bench. Today, we're thrilled to welcome District Justice Judge Tom Caulfield into the political jungle. Welcome, Tom. Hi, Steve. How are you? You're very, very well, thanks. So why don't we start out and, and help our viewership know if they happen to be before you in your magisterial district court, um, which I think is 528, right? Yes. Um, uh, how would they address you? Would they address you as judge? Would they address you as magistrate, Caulfield? What, what's appropriate? Uh, usually people say judge, you know, judge Caulfield or, you know, they, I mean, you can call me anything, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, most people it's, you know, your honor, I'd like to do this or, you know, judge, I'd like to do that. Now you're, you're running for judge countywide. It's a big, uh, it's a big step up from running for district justice where you run in, you're the district justice for Forest Hills, a lot more voters, a lot mm -hmm. more people to reach out to in a pandemic. It's not easy. I want to read you a quote. Tell me if you know who said this. I'm always saying glad I've met you to somebody I'm not all that glad I've met. If you want to stay alive, you have to say that stuff, though. You know who said that? You have so many books behind you. <laughs> this has got to be in one of those books. Wow, I've failed the first question. I don't know. No, this. no, no, you're great. It's, you know I had to do this to you. Holden... Caulfield. Oh, <laughs> oh I, I haven't read that since high school. Yeah, well, Catcher in the Rye is one of what we're going to call our rapid response today. And uh, so it'll be a lot of fun, but I couldn't couldn't hold back. But but truthfully, I mean, did you you do meet a lot of people and and oh, yeah. uh, in the course of campaigning? Oh yeah. And um, and I've been around for a while. I mean, I, I've been an attorney for you know almost 30 years, uh, practiced in the courts, Allegheny County and other counties, and been a magisterial district judge for over 10 years. Um, worked, I was an elected official out in Churchill. Uh, when I lived in Churchill, I have five communities now and worked for a state representative for 12 years. I, you, know, you meet a lot of people over the course of your life and it's, it's very rewarding. It's very, uh, you know, some people, do this and they're miserable you know they, they they but i like people i like going out and talking to people i like meeting people i like finding out about people and and when you talk to people i think you learn about them and you learn about yourself so it's it's always been enjoyable for me now you're wearing a uh, a button today that says twenty six thousand. why don't you share with us uh what that symbolizes well i've been a magisterial district judge since 2010 i was appointed by governor rendell um, after my predecessor Susan Avashevic de Lucente was elected to the Court of Common Pleas. And in the time since then, this I have heard over 26,000 cases in those 10 years. Um, and that's not every case that's been filed at my office. It's probably close to 70 or 80,000 cases that were, these are just the people that came in and wanted me to make a decision of some sort on their case. And I don't even think that includes you know, last year because we didn't have our statistics yet. So it's, that's why I say well over 26,000 cases. Included in those 26,000 are some of my own relatives over in the <laughs> forest. Hill, so. uh, let's, let's take a moment and go back to your uh, beginnings. You were born in Brad. Yes. Yes, I was. Back before, you know, John Fetterman put it on the map, back when it was uh, just a steel town. What's it like to have, you know, the, uh, the, the big steel mill in your, in your background that you see that every morning when you wake up? You, you know, you saw it and you, you heard it, you know, it's like we, we, I was born in Braddock and I always went to school in Braddock, but while I was in school, we moved to West Mifflin. We were right by Kennywood uh, and as I went through 
and you could hear it. I mean, you could hear when the trains would go through. You could hear it when they would open the furnaces and you could hear the whistles. I mean, you knew when it was three and when it was 11, you know, when the shifts turned. And, you know, it was, it was always there. I went to this little school that was almost directly across the street, uh, seventh grade. And, you know, you could hear when something went wrong. I remember there was a terrible accident and ambulance after ambulance after ambulance went in there um, because it was so dangerous. I mean, a number, of, a number of people died in that accident and it was just, it was just always there. You came out in the morning and you, there was soot on your car. Um, uh, it, it, yeah, I mean, it, you, it smelled like home, you know? I mean, it, it, there, there was just that smell of, of industry there. Uh, you got used to it. I'm sure it was probably destroying my lungs at the time, but I mean, that's just what you grew up with. Is that what happened up here? <laughs> no, that's genetics. That's my grandfather. There you go. <laughs> um, but I was supposed to go work there. I mean, in the 80s, when I was in high school, that was the game plan was I was going to follow my brothers. Uh, they both worked in the mill. My brother-in-law worked in the mill. My dad had worked in the mill. Um, and I was going to go there. And then U.S. Steel had other ideas by shutting them all down in the mid 80s so I had to come up with a plan b which was college when did you first start thinking about becoming a lawyer probably my second year of college a friend of mine that I'd known since uh, first grade um, said he was at Duquesne at the time and he said hey Duquesne Law School has this uh, this program where you can come in tour the school kind of find out about it at that time I was a philosophy major and you have to do something with a philosophy degree. Um, and I was like, that sounds great. So I went down there and, and he and I both became lawyers. We went through the school and we both went to Pitt, but it started off at the Duquesne Law School. My, uh, my cousin, my first cousin uh, was a philosophy major and uh, he actually ultimately became a, a professor of philosophy um, in college. But before he got the job, which took a while because there aren't very many of them, no. as you pointed out. He was uh, in our family's butcher shop. He was a he philosophized over the the, the beef. There's a the, where's the beef? A very important exactly that's philosophical not a physical question. Right? Yeah. <laughs> now you you worked at Kennywood during high school in order to enable yourself to uh, be able to put yourself through school. Is that correct? Yeah, I worked my way through college at Kennywood. Yeah. So what 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 rides uh, the Jackrabbit? Where where were you? Thunderbird? No 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 no. I made I, I if you ever had one of the square ice cream cones with the nuts and the cherries between, if you had one between 1985 and 1988, there's a, a very good chance I made it or sold it to you. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah. uh, now you, you went to, you, you did very well in high school. Yes. Uh, but, and you decided to go to Allegheny Community College instead of Pitt. What, what led you to make that decision? Well, I was enrolled at Duquesne. Um, you know, when I went to a small Catholic school in Braddock and when you go to a small Catholic school anywhere, they, they, they were like, well, obviously you're going to go to Duquesne and you're like, Okay, I was the first one in my family to graduate from college, so I was, you know, whatever. Um, so I, I went to, I enrolled at Duquesne, and then when I went down to pick classes in August, uh, found out that what I had hoped would be financial aid was not forthcoming, and so I had to withdraw. And when you know, you know, withdrew in August, it was really too late to apply any uh, to to any four-year school. I I went to the CCAC branch in West Mifflin. And it was fantastic. It was just fantastic. I met so many people there that were non-traditional students, a lot of displaced steel workers who were going back trying to get a degree. Um, a lot of people like me that just, you know, the, 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 the cost of a four-year school was just too great. And it was there almost by accident, just as a, a, a fluke of scheduling that I took my first philosophy course. And I was like, this is awesome. And I want to do this. And then when I transferred into Pitt after finishing up at CCAC, I found out that Pitt had the number one philosophy department in the world. Yeah, right. And you know, graduated summa cum laude from that. And then yeah, that that, that I have to tell you that that just stopped me in my tracks. I mean, I, I to graduate summa from Pitt in philosophy is an extraordinary achievement. Well, thank you, thank you. It was it was fun. It was a it was I had a blast at Pitt's campus. I I. It was great. It was just a great time in my life. And you, so you, you uh, stayed there for law school? Yes, I did. And then your first job out of school was at the public defender's office? Well, when, when I got out of law school, then you, there's a, this crazy delay. So you get out of law school in May, and then you have to study for the bar exam over the summer. 
Uh, and I had a summer job. I worked for a superior court judge for that summer, uh, doing opinions for a superior court judge, Judge Harry M. Montgomery, uh, who turned 90 while I was in his office um, and learned a lot there. And then you take the bar in July and then you sort of wait in limbo until November. And, and this is insane. I can't even believe that this is how we found out. You found out you passed the bar by calling the Philadelphia Inquirer and giving them your social security number because they ran a legal ad at that time that listed social security numbers and whether or not you passed. Yeah. And I found out now that kids get on the internet and find out immediately. And I'm like, I had the, and I had the guy that I went to, to law school with who I know, Warner Mariani is his name, sure. attorney Warner Mariani, dear friend. Um, I had his social security number and he had mine. You know, you go through this thing and you call and you give them your social security number and then you wait for the longest seconds in your life. And somebody goes, congratulations. And you're like, oh my God, <laughs> I passed the bar and I'm a lawyer. Um, yeah. And then, you know, I, I, uh, I did some, uh, some work for individual lawyers for a couple of months and then the public defender's office. I got hired January the 15th, 1992. And you spent... 20 years there? Just about, almost, just shy, 19 and change. And you were the deputy? I was deputy director when I left. Deputy yes. director, working under one of the great public defenders of Allegheny County and Allegheny County history, Mr. Mackin, and and, uh, and maybe uh, Lester Nauhaus also, Kevin Sasanowski, perhaps? I worked under all of them. All I, of them. Uh, yep, I was there for a lot of a lot of change. You know, I got hired under Judge Nauhaus. Um, and then uh, we went through some change when the uh, when the county commissioners changed in 1996, and, and mm. we were all sort of fired or laid off. And then we all got hired back when the ACLU sued, and uh, you know the director had been fired, and then he was replaced, and then somebody else came in. It was it was it was not always fun times sort of the politics of the office, but the work was always enjoyable. And, and mm -hmm. to your point about uh, Michael Mack, and yes, he's not only one of the, the, the greatest uh, public defenders, he was one of the greatest people I've ever met. That's, that's I'm glad you said that. Um, let's, uh, speaking of that, let's go to show and tell. Unless you brought Michael in, let's, uh, let's see not. what we got. I have this. So. Oh, fine. I don't. Put it up here so you can. Yeah, see that's it. perfect. That is a 2013 runner of steel medal from the Pittsburgh Marathon 5K. And the reason I chose that object is until 2013, um, I had never run more than a mile in my life. Um, and I'd never, but I'd always wanted to. I mean, I was, I had smoked for years uh, growing up, you know. You, stupidly you start smoking like when you're a kid and then smoked until I was in my 20s. <clears throat> I quit, I put on some weight, you know, kind of, then had kids and like everything kind of got in the way and all this stuff. And I always thought, hey, I'd like to, I'd actually like to try that. I'd actually like to try that. And, but I was never a jock. I was never an athlete, played baseball, a little bit of basketball, but nothing like, nothing serious. And then in like 2012, I said, you're going to get into shape. You're going to actually do something and you know, set my mind to it and started you know working out a little bit at the gym and running a little bit on a track and then I a friend of mine who was running you know said you know, we'll, we'll run this and that'll be your race and I was like okay and if I walk I walk and if I don't I don't but I'm going to give it hell and I ran every step and I was just thrilled and proud and I thought well okay that was fun. Let's try another and another and another. And I've run, I don't know how many 5Ks, 5 milers, 10Ks, 10 milers, and a couple of half marathons. Wow. So, how many pounds ago was that? Well, at the time I started, yeah, it was probably about 30, 40 pounds ago. That's fantastic. That's great. Um, let's go run into our deep dive. Um, so we talk about who inspired you, what gets you up in the morning, what keeps you up at night, what you want to be when you grow up. So who is your inspiration? I'm sure you've had many, but uh, why don't you pick one? Well, when I was uh, when I was at CCAC, uh, I had really great teachers. You know, I mean, it's like, and they were so approachable. It wasn't like this 
ivory tower. It was like, it was like, it was much more communal, I guess. It was community college. Um, and one of them, Professor Taylor, uh, who taught uh, political science and history. <clears throat> and I'll never forget this one incident because this, this just will tell you the kind of person he was. He gave you tests and I mean, and they weren't like fill in the blank tests. They were these essay tests and you'd fill in these little blue books. And if you needed more than one, you just fill them in, fill them in, fill them in, fill them in. And he said, you know, I never give out hundreds. Nobody ever gets a hundred, all this stuff. And I, I, and when you were done with the test, you would write the sentence. I swear I have not cheated on this exam and you'd sign it. It was your oath that you didn't. And I handed it in and I was leaving and I thought, it was like I could see it. I could see that one of the answers was incomplete. I could see my notebook. There were subsections. And I went back and I said, I didn't, I didn't finish this. And he goes, did you look at your book? I said, no. He said, did you sign the back? I said, yes, I did. He said, finish it. And I got 100. Wow. It was, like, it, was, it was like, here's somebody who was inspirational to me, who made me want to be you know, the best student I could be. Uh, the philosophy major was paired with a, a political science minor and a, and a history minor, a Greek history uh, minor as well. Um, and you think that was, that has affected your empathy when you have people coming before you who've made mistakes along the way? You ever thought about that? Being a public defender will make you do that because you see them as... I can understand how somebody who is not... A defense attorney or not a public defender could look at people who, who are who are defendants in a case and see them in two dimensions you know that's it's you see the person as the offense you know it's it, they're not a, they're not a real flesh and blood person but i think when you represent people and especially when you represent them as a public defender and you get to to see sort of the complexity of of everybody and it, it, it gives you a lot of empathy. You see the struggles and you get insight into the background. And uh, I think that does it more than anything for me. Those, those, because I also worked at the public defender's office as a student for two years. So I had well over 20 years in the office. Um, well, yeah. all right, that, that's, thank you for that. Um, mot um, motivation, so you are, let's uh, talk for a second about uh, in fact, you're an elder in your community church, and uh, you're also very involved with fair housing. Yes. Tell, tell us a little bit about that. Um, well, a friend of mine who uh, I've known for a long time, he contacted me and he said that he was the executive, chief executive officer of the Fair Housing Partnership. And, you know, when you, when you deal with a population of, of folks as a public defender who are housing unstable, and when you see really systemic injustice in the courts, you know that there's systemic injustice elsewhere. And there, and there is a lot of injustice in housing. There's a lot of unfairness in the system. And the federal fair, fair housing laws are supposed to address that. So the, the ability to participate meaningfully in a way to ensure that one of the most basic human needs is met, you know, clean, decent, affordable housing is met and met in a way that is fair and equitable and you know, follows the law. That's very appealing to me. So, so I enjoyed doing that and a lot. Perspiration, what, what makes you sweat? We know you like cycling and, we, and uh, running. And uh, so we've got that piece done. And you were Churchill Borough Council. I mean, you, you were the first Democratic president of Churchill Borough Council. I was um, in in the early two thousands. I uh, I was talking with uh, the committee folks and some of the, the folks involved in the community, and we it was a six to one Republican uh, advantage. And I was told, well, they let it's a Republican town. They let us have one, and I was like, really? Uh, so in 05 i called a friend of mine who had run before in in hadn't made it and i said i'm going to run for council we'll run together as a team and i had been on a state representative staff and I, I i'd seen how campaigns can use data and i'd seen how to really hit doors i mean i loved lo and i still do love door knocking i mean when you're talking one-to-one -one with a voter and you're making eye contact and it's hard to do on zoom but when you're you know at somebody's door and you're 
you have come to their place and you are asking, you're opening yourself up very vulnerably and you're saying, I would like your support. I would appreciate your, your vote. And we went out and we hit like all the doors in Churchill, that, you know, and, and we won handily, the two of us did. And, and then the next two years later, we picked up a, a fourth seat and became the majority. And I became uh, the first Democrat ever to be council president in Churchill. And I was very proud of that. But what I was more proud of mm -hmm. was two years later, the seven people who were there in, that when I became council president four to three, um, my Republican predecessor came up to me and he said, uh, you've done a really good job. And he's a friend and, and they're all friends, quite honestly, we all got along. He said, you've done a really good job and I would like to put your name in nomination this time. And the Republican vice president from the last time would like to second that. And we'll do the same for Bob. He was the vice president and it was unanimous. And that to me showed that, you know, at the local level where you're just getting stuff done, you know, I mean, we're not arguing high points. We're making sure that the streets get plowed, right. <clears throat> you know, the right. garbage gets picked up, the sewers work, you know, that, that we have uh, parks, you know, I mean, and, and, and that, I was very proud of that moment that, that showed to me that we could still all work together. And, and that, that moment stands out. There. That's great. So the, just very briefly, let's do some aspiration. I want to read you a quote, see if you can guess who this is from in light of your, your, your love of, of, of the sport. I'd rather be riding the buses in the minor leagues than practicing law for a living. Hmm. That's a tough one. I mean, there's no way for you to know it, but it's Tony La Russa. Really? Who actually, Tony La Russa went to Florida State, <laughs> had a law degree, and obviously took a different path, fortunately for his, his ball teams, one of the great managers of all time. He's back. Um, so is there something else? I mean, you've been an elected official. You're, you're, um, you've been in the judicial branch. Where's your future? Well, I hope it's on the court of common pleas. <laughs> Good um, answer. <laughs> I, I think that I bring uh, a breadth of experience that that is unique. I think I bring a perspective that's unique. Um, I think I bring a background that makes me right for this moment. Um, and nobody's going to work harder. They're just not. Well, that's serious stuff. And we're now going to go into the rapid response, uh, catcher in the rye edition of rapid response. Um, We've got four categories. The first is diner Ritter style. Remember the movie Diner? Yes. Great movie. Remember the, the scene where I can't remember who it is, gives his his fiance before she becomes his fiance the, the test on baseball. There was a big baseball test. Anyway, so that's why we're calling it Ritter's because it's diner and it's Pittsburgh, right? Very good. All right, here we go. You just pick one or the other. Um, it's like guilty. Not guilty. Okay. Uh, Fenway or Globe Life? Oh, Fenway. The oldest? The oldest. It's the oldest part. Oh, I've been to both. And yeah. it's, it's, uh, and uh, Fenway blows, uh, blows Globe Life away. Wow. Wow. The newest part in Texas. And you know, uh, you and your wife have done a tour of what, 24 parks? Yes. That's glad you did it before the pandemic. Our honeymoon was six of them. And uh, it was her idea. She scheduled it that way. We got married at PNC Park during batting practice of a Cubs game. Uh, had the reception in a box with our family. Uh, and then two days later, we were on a plane to Seattle, rented a car, drove to San Diego, stopped along the way. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right, here we go. Candlestick or Oracle? Mm. Oracle. Have you, did you ever go to Candlestick when the Giants played there before Oracle? Did not. Very windy place. I've not been to Oracle, but I've been to Candlestick. Obviously, an earthquake sort of did that one in. Yes. Uh, here we go. Um, Three River Stadium or PNC Park? PNC Park. PNC Park or Forbes Field? PNC Park. Did you ever go to Forbes Field? As, As a ever? child, don't remember it. OK. All right, next, philosophy major. I think, therefore, I can't. Existentialism or determinism? Existentialism. So you believe we have free will? I do. There's a reason or experience? 
How do we make decisions? Rationalism, empiricism. Is it reason or experience? Well, I would wiggle and say it's 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 reason tempered by or it's reason educated by experience. Education informs your reason. Um, so I'm going to go with reason. Ethics, morals, or law? <laughs> Are we, how to wow. be good or bad, or how to be as good as we can be all together? I would, I would aspirationally ethics, practically law. Okay, good. This is great. You're reaching back to that pit philosophy summa. You know I'm so impressed. All right, we're not going to go too much further. This is political jungle. Here we go. If the glove fits, as a as a public defender and a defense lawyer extraordinaire, Johnny Cochran or F. Lee Bailey? Johnny Cochran. If it fits, you yeah. must be quick. All right, Leslie Abramson or Ann Bremner. Do you have any idea who either one of those? I do not. That's I, and I I you know. I prepare for the show. You know, I wouldn't expect I get to ask the questions. It's fun. And of judges, which is cool. Leslie Abramson represented the Menendez brothers okay. and lost. And Ann Bremner represented Michael Jackson and won. Kevin Sosnowski or Lester Nauhaus? <laughs> I couldn't hear that one. I'm sorry. I think <laughs> that I'm having technical di difficulties. You're breaking. That's great. It's That's all great. pixelated. That's great. I love that. Now I was on a uh, on, on a, something last night with uh, with Connor Lamb and uh, Congressman Lamb, and, and the question was, "Are you running for the Senate?" And he said, "Oh, I'm having connectivity issues." <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, the last and final three. Exercise discretion. Tour de France, Beta Breakers, or Inca Trail to Machu Picchu. Tour de France. So we're, we're just so we're, you know, we're building on your cycling and, and running and hiking um, love of those things, um, which are now public and the world knows. Um, and uh, let's let's bring it a little bit home. Great Allegheny Passage, the Pittsburgh Marathon or the Appalachian Trail. Wow. The Montour Trail, which I don't know. Let's stick with Appalachian Trail. I I'm going to go with the Gap Trail. Ooh. I run it a lot. I run it a lot. I bike it a lot. And it's, yeah, that's, I love it. Excellent. Finally, Churchill or Forest Hills? I represent both of those places and they are fine places to live. And I've lived in both of those places for years. Yeah. yeah they are, they are two communities. You are yeah. correct. <laughs> You're not going to go there, are you, Judge? No hell no. <laughs> All right. Listen, you've acquitted yourself well. Uh, Holden Caulfield. <laughs> Phoebe or Holden? No, we're good. Thanks so very much for coming into the jungle and being brave enough to do it. Get back on the trail. We uh, wish you the best, of, the best of success. Well, thank you so much, Steve. I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. Great.